Hey, everybody, it's Larry Berman here. And as you might be able to see over my shoulder, you got me in the middle of the Leaf game on Friday afternoon. So it's uh, four o'clock. The TSX just closed. U.S. market closed early today. U.S. holiday, Thanksgiving, very illiquid. So we didn't learn a whole lot this week, given the holiday. Um, so I thought I'd take the time to kind of look forward uh, rather than do a review and give you guys a sense uh, for those of you who don't have access to such things as uh, what the street estimates are uh, for next year and beyond from a top-down perspective and a bottom-up perspective when looking at the uh, U.S. market. So let's take a dive into the chart room and see what uh, we can see. So the the Bloomberg surveys the street. All these strategists put out their forecast. You can see the list of names here if you have glasses on <laughs> I get it's hard for me to see but uh, you can see some of the names and you'll you'll certainly recognize them um, when you look at 2024 which is what we're looking at here the year end price target based on strategist again this is top down consensus is 4610 currently 4559 so what the top down strategists say is next year on average there's going to be no growth in the u.s market that's kind of interesting <laughs> um if you look right now at price targets the most bullish uh, at rbc Lori calvacina uh, and the most bearish and not everyone's got price targets up here looks to be uh, eric johnson um, Mike Wilson, who's a known bear, is at 4,500. If you look at the current 2023 year-end numbers, we're getting pretty close. Uh, Michael Wilson's at 3,900, pretty close to the bottom of the pack in terms of what guys think it's going to be worth this year. Um, now, these dates of these targets were before the last Fed meeting in early November. So I imagine a lot of these guys have different thoughts. Uh, Sock Gen is the only one here. Uh, maybe there's two that are post that. Um, Binky Chada uh, at Deutsche uh, changed his number. Um, and uh, Manish Cabra at Sock Gen changed his number. But again, looking at 2024, because it's always about to go forward. Where earnings are current trailing, 221. They think we'll get 4% earnings growth next year. You know, where are the bears? Who thinks earnings are going to go down from where we are now? Again, you look at Mike Wilson, and he actually, from where we are now, thinks there's going to be some earnings growth. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of um, interesting here that – Basically, only a couple of strategists think that we're going to get slightly lower numbers next year. Most people are looking for some sort of earnings growth. So that's interesting. You can see the wide range here around the median and around one standard deviation from the median there. Uh, and you can see where the outliers are. If you look at the bottom up, this is really interesting. So what this study does is it looks at the stocks at the average analyst estimate. So you see, for example, MRNA, there's 25 analyst targets. The consensus rating is 3.7. Um, obviously, the closer it is to five, the, the higher the rating, the lower it is, the lower the rating. Um, they think the 12 month target consensus on average is 135. It's currently at 78 and a half. So this has the highest expected return. GM is there, Albemarle. Um, you can see some of the names, Delta Airlines and, and so forth. The ones that are most overvalued right now, Intel top of the list, where the 12 month analyst forecast is $38, consensus rating is 315, 48 analysts, and we're currently on $44 on the name. So that's a name Intel right now at this point that I'm uh, shorting by way of selling calls into it without owning the underlying security uh, above 42 and a half. Um, when it 
hit 38 and all that long ago, we, we started uh, doing that. Um, so there's a number of names here. And again, you can see them um, that are already above their 12 month forward price target. So interesting little dashboard we have, but when you take all the weights in, in the S and P 500, you aggregate them all up the 12 month forward uh, is a little over 5,000. So analysts from the bottom up tend to be more optimistic than the strategists that are looking, you know, a bit more macro at the market. This indicator here looks at the historical median, average mean, whatever you want to phrase it, and then one standard deviation plus or minus. And, and so when the markets get cheap relative to estimates, you don't know how cheap they're going to get, but when they get cheap relative to estimates, usually opportunity. When they get expensive relative to estimates, usually a bad time to put money to work. So now we're, we're much closer than we were even a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, there was some value building and we had talked about that. Now we don't see a lot of value relative to price target. Again, you compare it to history and you kind of get a sense of, of the ups and downs there. So that really bottom up, top down, this is not a great time to put money to work. And, and so, again, the cautionary message is still very much there. Now, what I find interesting when we go back to the top down estimates is what this forward PE is. Now, you know, historically it was said, well, interest rates are low and therefore the PE can be higher. And now interest rates are high and these guys still aren't taking their PE down. So I think the market is grossly mispriced from a, a multiple perspective. And it only we only need to see a bad economic outcome, i.e. hard landing, where again, universally expected for some type of earnings growth next year, even though the price targets are not materially higher at this point than where we sit today. So that, that's the conundrum. So when we look at interest rates and look historically, you go if you went back to where market the 10 year was in the 4 to 5% range and you looked at what the historic pe was back then these numbers are 70 forward pe's are 16 17 not 20 so again the market's very very rich based on interest rates. So if you're going to make the argument the rates are going to come back down to over the, the average over the last decade, call it between 2 and 3% for the 10-year, then you can correctly argue that that should be the multiple. And I will argue that inflation needs to come back down to below 2. Again, well anchored inflation expectations what we're seeing now in the umish longer term inflation expectation is that it's now starting to break out so we'll see if they this can get beyond these levels but we expect inflation to remain sticky and therefore the cost of money to be higher and therefore the risk premium, i.e. the multiple, should be lower. Sticking to it, I'm looking ugly right now with this market rally, but you got to go with the probabilities, guys. But always remember, the markets can stay irrational far longer than you and I can stay solvent. So this is not the time to be shorting stocks necessarily. This is the time to be cautious with your lungs. At some point, when the economy starts to break, shorting stocks may make a lot of sense for people. In any case, enjoy the upcoming holiday season. Look forward to family and uh, don't look forward to the snow unless you like that kind of thing. Have a great week, everyone.